Has it ever happened to you that you're trying to write an email and you're trying to be sarcastic and it just comes awfully bad? <laughs> and then you go back and you erase it and you're there for 30 minutes trying to write something that's meaningful um, and you just can't do it. And so you go to your uh, pad, you know, your little device and, and you try to put in emojis and you just can't find the emoji and then you just put everything down, you walk across uh, to the next cubicle next to you and then you tell the guy you're frustrated. Why is that? Why is it so simple to be able to communicate personally and sometimes so hard to be able to communicate online? Well, <laughs> I think that in today's world with globalization, the promise of globalization has not been met. And one of the reasons is people have stopped listening to each other. Globalization was supposed to be this integration of cultures of trade, of commerce, and in the end, some people took the benefit, but not everyone did. What happened? I'll tell you a story. The other day, I'm uh, babysitting my kids, and we have one iPad, and so my wife is uh, out of the house, and I'm thinking, wow, this is great. I'm going to get to watch some TV by myself. And, uh, and so I give the kids their iPad, and I say, hey, go off, and, and don't bother me for an hour. <laughs> And so uh, I'm there watching, uh, you know, my thing on TV, and all of a sudden my kids come back and they're fighting over the iPad. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible. And they keep fighting and I can't get them to sort of come together and agree on what they're gonna do with the iPad, because we only have one iPad. And so at that moment, I have a great idea. I say, you know what, I'm gonna buy them another iPad. And so when my wife comes home, you know, I, I'm gonna share this great idea with her. And you know, the smart woman that she is, she says, why do you want to do that? I say, what do you mean? I mean, that way I can watch TV so they can go on their... <laughs> and, and so uh, she says, yes, but if you do that, they're not going to learn to collaborate. So I'm thinking, wow, she's really wise. Um, <laughs> and so obviously we never got to buy the iPad. Um, I think these trends, you know, if you look at the different trends that are happening around us in the world, um, you know, are, are pulling away at the center. They're not bringing us together, but they're really keeping us sort of isolated in our own bubbles. And so I'm gonna go through a few examples of that. You know, the connected and isolation. You know, we talk about the iPad, we talk about these things where we sit down and we're constantly on the thing and we're all there and we can all text each other, but is there any real interaction? And that's the biggest problem in today's world. We can't go to someone and say, hey, I believe in you through an iPad, right? We can't go around and say, hey, we're gonna solve this problem, I'll send you the answer by text, right? We're isolated in our iPads, in our devices, and then there's a thing called confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is when you totally believe you're correct and everyone else is bad, and, and you have this, uh, set of information that you're being fed by Google, Facebook, Twitter, where you follow the things that you really like, right? Because, you know, if I like Fox News, I'll follow Fox News till the end of the day, and then I say, oh, look at that guy that follows CNN, he must be crazy. Um, and so we end up listening to the media and to all these things because they, they sort of know what we like, and they just keep feeding it to us and feeding it to us. And we stop trying to understand other people. Why is that? Why are we letting technology enslave us? Another example. In December 17, 2010, Mohamed Bouzizi, a street vendor in Tunisia, is frustrated by the way he's being treated by the municipal police. And so he goes out and buys a gallon of gasoline, he pours it on himself, and then he lights himself on fire. And that's the start of the Arab Spring. During that moment, for the next few months, 18 countries and their people are in flux. The people of those 18 countries completely turn over the governments. Do you know how many of those countries today have a democracy? Zero. Why is that? Why is it so easy to disrupt things but so hard to build? And what's really important is that we're letting all this technology out there, 
And some people really don't have the wherewithal or the patience to go past it once you disrupt something. Because it's not enough to disrupt something. You really, if you really want to fix and change the world, you got to go past that. You got to stop disrupting and then you have to start building. But in order to build, you have to come to the center. And we've lost that. We completely lost the center. I'm going to end with one story. Um, there's a movie that I really like. And as I was trying to put my, all my thoughts together, um, a friend of mine said, hey, why don't you use this allegory? And it's, uh, it's a movie, uh, the name of it is Blade Runner. It's a little bit old, uh, but it's Harrison Ford. And Harrison Ford is this cop who's supposed to take uh, and make sure that in, in the future, there's all these robots going around. And you can't tell the difference between robots and humans. And it so happens that they send all the robots away everywhere uh, to do all the menial work because, you know, technology is so advanced that people just don't have to work. So it's sort of like a dystopian society where people just hang out and, and get sedated and, and they're miserably uh, alone uh, doing nothing. And once in a while, some of these robots that are out around in the universe, uh, they come back to Earth. And so Harrison Ford is supposed to go out there and make sure that he kills those robots. And so four robots come back and he's tasked with going after them. And at the end of the movie, you know, when he finally gets to one of the robots, the main, the main bad guy, the robot ends up being more human than us humans. And I think it's a really interesting story to what we're living today. With the advances that are coming in artificial intelligence and automation, we're gonna have more free time now than we've ever had in the history of the world. What are we gonna do with that time? Are we gonna let technology rule us? Or are we gonna use that technology to become more human? To be able to share, to be able to express our feelings and our emotions, because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that separates us from the machines. Thank you.